So this is the types of pay notes. They can also be found in the instructions for this week, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and record this so you can see as I go through things and explain it. Um, so one of the things after you find a job is, or maybe even before you find a job, if you're comparing different jobs that may pay a different way, um, I want you to understand the four different ways that you can really get paid at a different job. And there's some terms that go in with that. Um, one of them is the fact that you need to know that there's 52 weeks in a year, 12 months per year. In this class, we're going to consider 40 hours full time. If they talk about part time jobs, we're going to consider that anything um, 20 or less. And then 52 12 weeks per month. Um, and I'd prefer you not to use the decimal because that rounds some things because if you think about it, most of the time when you're probably in elementary school, people ask you, well, how many weeks are in a month? And they'll say four. Well, here's the problem with that. For example, in September, there's 30 days. So if I just said there was four day, four weeks in a month, that's only 28 days. So most months have 30 or 31 days. So if you only just said that there was four weeks in a month, I find a blank piece of paper here, or at least partial of it, and I did that for 12 months, that's only 48 weeks, okay? You would actually lose four weeks of pay if you only said there was four weeks in every month. So I don't think any of you wanna lose four weeks of pay for a year. Um, so that is why anytime they talk about weeks per month, it's 52 twelfths. So that way you count those partial weeks for each month. Okay. Um, some other vocabulary is monthly, which I kind of did up here. There's, there's 12 times per year. If you get paid semi-monthly, that is twice a month. So 24 times per year. Weekly would be 52 times per year. And then bi-weekly, you would think that's twice a week, but that's actually not what it is. It's every other week. So that actually is half of our weekly ones. So that would be 26 times per year, okay? And yes, there is a difference. Semi-monthly is would be like if you got paid a set date, so like the first and the 15 of every month. Bi-weekly would just say, hey, if I got paid every other Friday, well, some Friday, some months, that's three Fridays, so you get paid three times. Um, and that all goes back to that each month has just over four weeks in it, so you have those extra days that add up, so you get a couple extra pay periods if you get paid bi-weekly. So there's really four ways to get paid. One of them just has an extra to it. So you could get paid what's considered a salary, which is a fixed weekly, monthly, or yearly pay that does not change based on the number of hours that you work. Okay. So an example of this would be your teachers. We get paid a salary. So we're contracted to be here a certain amount of days at a certain time. So we have to be here anytime students are here. So it doesn't matter if your teacher shows up right at 740 as long as they're ready to go and leaves at 305 when students do, or if a teacher shows up at 7 a.m. and stays until 7 p.m., they're gonna get paid whatever their salary is, okay? So the next way you can get paid is a wage, which is what a lot of people get paid. And this is what you get paid if you get paid an hourly or occasionally they'll do this a daily rate of pay. So if you are an hourly employee and you get paid per hour, that means you have a job that gets paid a wage. 
Then you have commission. A commission is when you are paid based on the price of the items. Okay. Most people this, you basically get a percentage. Okay. Um, so a lot of people that get commission jobs or say like a real estate agent or things like that. They get paid a certain percent based on what they sell. Graduated commission is taking that a step further. So commission is just one percentage rate. Graduated commission is still that pay based on the price of the item sold, which is a percentage, except for this time, there could be lots of different levels to this. So pay based on the price of items sold. Using a hierarchy, tiered level, however you want to say. I usually use tiered. Level of commission. Okay, so, and I'll do some examples of this. Um, a lot of, if you sell things kind of door to door, so companies that would be similar to this would be like Tupperware, some jewelry lines, um, a lot of cosmetic things, places like that. They'll do a tiered system. Um, so like the more you sell, a higher percentage you get once you get over certain levels. And then the last way is a piece rate. And piece rate typically is when you get paid um, per item or things that you uh, succeed in. Okay. Um, so a lot of like telemarketers, things like that get paid a piece rate. You get paid per the number of things you assemble, per something that you like pick things like that, okay? Um, down below here on the notes, I also have basically just a list of formulas that kind of go with each one. I think it looks a little bit different if you look in the notes that I put online. Um, I describe salary and then I put the earnings. If you take the blank copy of my notes, I kind of put all the key things on the one page. So I put all your definitions. Um, and all your formulas so that one page basically has all the key items on it. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of review how each of these different rates work, different types of pay work, um, and do some examples for you. Okay. And here again, they're still all in the instructions for this week. It just looks a little different on this note sheet, but all the information is still there. So for example, a salary job, okay, how you calculate salary earnings is if you take the number of pay periods, so how often that person gets paid, times the number of pay per each of those periods gives you your earnings for the year or your salary. So we're gonna use this formula two different ways. Um, example one talks about Thomas gets paid bi-weekly and earns $1,380.80 each pay period. What is Thomas's annual salary? So we need to highlight some things. So we're going to have to look and see how often he gets paid and then how much he gets paid each pay period. So the earnings formula would be the number of pay periods times the pay per period. So in this case, we're trying to find his total earnings. So bi-weekly, we learned earlier, is 26. So in this case, we have to take 26 times $1,380.80. So if we multiply these together, our total earnings are $35,900. And 80 cents. So if you're finding the total salary, you're basically just multiplying. The salary example number two is working kind of in reverse. So Sam earns 
$37,686 a year and he gets paid monthly, what is her pay? So same formula, our earnings is our number of pay periods times our pay per period. So we can find any part of this as long as we know two of them. So this time we know our total earnings is $37,686. We know that they get paid monthly, so we know the number of pay periods is 12. What we don't know is how much they get each pay period. So if you know your salary, you're gonna to have to divide this. So we're gonna take and divide by 12. So I know that this person is gonna make $3,140.50 each month. Okay, do you have to write this, the formula out each time? No. Um, but for the sake of this, if you're looking back, I think it helps you understand where the numbers come from a little bit more. Wage, remember this is when you get paid um, a certain amount per hour. So I'm going to flip back to the formulas on the front page. So we have regular earnings. So remember this one, you get paid per hour. So if you work over 40 hours a week, you're gonna get overtime. So regular earnings is your hourly rate times the regular hours you worked. Plus if you have a job that gets tips, this can add in there. Overtime earnings, so most people, unless it's maybe a holiday, typically get time and a half is what they call it. So one and a half times your hourly rate times the hours of overtime work occasionally Somebody might say that you get paid double time, so we would change this number to a two if it was a holiday or something like that. Um, but typical overtime hours that are stated in there. And that would make our total earnings, the regular earnings, so the sum that we got here, with the total that we get for overtime, and you add them together. So let's look at an example of this. So Ed works if Ed works more than 20 hours in one week, so this one we're looking at this for a part-time person, he receives one and a half times his regular wage of $3.40. During the second week of February, there was an ice storm. Many people ordered pizza to be delivered. That week, Ed worked 26 hours and received $43.76. So we're looking at part-time. So regular is gonna be 20 or less hours and then overtime would be any hours that he works over 20. So if we go through this, so first we have to figure the regular hours. So that would be our hourly rate times the regular hours worked plus any tips. So in this case, to find our calculations, we would have to take $3.40. And Ed worked a total of 26 hours. So if we think about this, the first 20 hours are our regular hours. Plus he got tips. So I'm gonna kind of break this down. So if I multiply these two together, that would get me $68. Plus 43, 75 in tips. So a total of $111. And 75 cents for his regular earnings plus he has overtime so one and a half times the hourly rate plus the overtime hours worked so he gets one and a half times three dollars and forty cents an hour and when we take those first regular hours off that leaves us with six hours of overtime so if we multiply all three of them together, that's $30 and 60 cents. So the total earnings, remember, is our regular earnings. Plus our overtime earnings. So we're gonna add the $111.75 plus the $30 and 60 cents. So he would get paid $142 and 35 cents. The same thing would work if you had a full-time job. 
we would just be looking at 40 hours and then anything over 40 is overtime, which I think most of the ones in the work will look at a full-time job instead of a part-time job, but not all. The next example is commission. So if we look at the commission problems, so remember commission, we're gonna have to find the price of the item sold times the number of items or the total sales, depending on how they give it to you, times the percent of the commission. So in this case, Ed is selling TVs that cost $199. He earns commission pay. If he sold 16 TVs this week and earns 7% commission, how much will he earn? So they give us the price of the items sold. So we're gonna have to take that times the number of items times the percent of commission. So in this case, the items cost $199 each. He sold 16 of them and he gets 7%. So we could enter 7% in our calculator if we know where the percent key is, or we could change this percent to a decimal. So to change it to a decimal, it's like dividing by 100, which basically just moves the decimal over two places. So if it's here, you divide. So we're gonna take this time 0.5. 0, 07. If we multiply all three of those together, we'll find out that Ed would make $222.88. Another job that pays commission is maybe a car salesperson. So Ed sells cars now. He switched jobs. He's a really good salesman. He's still going to earn commission pay. So he sold four cars and they gave us the prices for those. He's going to earn 5% commission on the sale of these cars. How much will he earn? So this time, basically, we just need to find the total sales times the per percent of commission. So we're going to have to add up how much each of those cars cost. I know a lot of you would probably just do this work on your calculator, and that's fine. Just show me the total that you get times his percent, so 5%, so 0 0.05. So we basically divided that by 100. So if I add all these together, so that means the total cars that he sold was $27,227. So if we take that times 5% or 0 0.05, Ed is gonna get paid $1,361 and 35 cents. Okay. Graduated commission is very similar to this, except for you get paid a different level for each amount that you sell. So if we looked at graduated commission, it looks a little bit more like this. So you're going to have the first level of items sold times that percent commission plus the second level item sold times the commission. And you could do this as many levels if you wanted to. Most of them have two. I've seen some up to 10. Um, basically, graduated commission is an incentive to sell more. So the higher you sell, the higher percentage you get for each of those. Um, and the example that we're gonna do just has two. So Ed decided selling cars didn't earn him enough, but he really liked commission pay. So he's gonna keep selling cars because they made more than the TVs. Um, and he's also going to go sell cosmetics at home parties, companies. He's going to receive 3% commission for the first $500 in sales. Then he receives 7.5% commission for anything that he sells over the $500. So this month he sold $1,358 worth of cosmetics. Okay, so remember we had the first level sold times the first level percentage. The second level items, the second level percentage. Okay, so if I break this down, I think about this. So they his first level is five hundred dollars. So if he sells from zero to five hundred dollars, he's going to earn three percent of this. So this is kind of like level one. Level two is anything from five hundred and one dollars on up. 
he's going to get seven and a half percent of. So since this one has two tiers, the first thing that I'm going to do is take that total amount and I'm going to subtract 500. So the first 500, he gets 3% of. Anything over that, he's going to get 7.5% of. So if we do this problem, so the first $500, Ed gets 3% of. Anything over $500, so the $858, the difference of those, Ed's going to get 7.5% of. So 3% of 500 is just $15. But then he gets 7.5% of 850, which is $64.35. So if I add those together, Ed's going to make $79 and 35 cents. The last way that somebody could get paid is piece rate. So remember piece rate is basically when you get paid for a certain number of items sold times the number of items. So the number of items sold or successful transactions times the piece rate that you get for that. So how much you get per item. Um, so Ed changed careers again. So he wasn't happy selling cosmetics. He thinks he could do better at telecommunications. So he's gonna make phone calls all day. So he gets so much, he gets $5 for every successful call that he makes. So this week he su successfully signed 45 people up for this new credit card. So the number that he sold would be that 45. He gets $5 for each of those. So if we multiply that, Ed's gonna make $225 that week, okay? And this could be for anything. I once had a student that would get paid um, so much for every oil change that he did at a place. And the other thing that can happen that you'll see on some of the problems is sometimes they'll combine some of these. So maybe you get a certain percentage, but then you also might get paid per hour, or you may, might get paid um, per hour, and then you get an extra amount for every like envelope you stuff or things like that. So sometimes they'll combine some of these two. So don't let that confuse you. Um, and then sometimes what you'll do, and I just did this with different jobs, but maybe you were looking at one particular job, but there's three companies that they all pay differently for the same job. So how could you figure out which one would actually get you more earnings? at least before you look at benefits and deductions and all that stuff, um, just straight out which one would get you most. So this one, I'm just comparing three jobs. So you have somebody that's maybe out of high school or maybe has a little bit of knowledge on different things and they're in the healthcare field. So you have one that's just kind of like general healthcare, one's a pharmacy technique, um, or there's one that they're just like, hey, I wanna go do this. They form molds, they make things. It sounds like fun. So the healthcare worker gets paid $17.95 per hour. The mold maker gets $700 per week. And the pharmacy technician gets a salary of $33,000 per year. So if I really wanted to compare them, I need to find one unit that's all the same. So the easiest way to do this is probably to find it for the year. So we're gonna make some assumptions in years that'll be a little more detailed. So if I get paid a certain amount per hour, we're gonna make the assumption that that person works 40 hours a week, because that would be the full time. And they're gonna work for 52 weeks out of the year. Okay, so if I get paid $17.95 an hour, I work 40 hours a week for 52 weeks, all right, I didn't work this out in advance. I'm going to multiply them and find out that that person makes $37,336 a year. If I'm the mold maker, I get paid a certain amount per week. So if I take that times the 52 weeks in a year, I can find out about how much they would make in a year. 
which is $36,400. There is no work for the last one because we already know their salary for the year. So if I would have paused at the beginning of this and looked, I went, well, I don't know which one's gonna make me the most, but after doing some calculations, you can see that probably the person that makes the most is the one that gets paid per hour. Um, but what we'll learn in the second, later on in this chapter is what happens with all the benefits and deductions? How do they really compare? So in a future unit, we'll also do that. But for this one, we're just gonna take it just at face value of what do they get paid. Okay. So here again, these notes with the exception of this last chart are all in the instructions for this week. Um, what you're going to have to complete, whether your class is on Thursday or Friday, is you will see a quiz appear in Canvas. Um, it's basically going to take the place of your worksheet for this week. You can use all the notes, um, ask questions on it. I just thought this would maybe be a better way to submit it um, than trying to have you download a PDF, do you share your work on it, um, and wait for me to grade everybody's. Um, and I, this way, when you submit it through the quiz in Canvas, um, like I said, use your notes, everything is just like a worksheet. Um, and I'll make it so most of the problems will self-grade. So when you submit the assignment, you'll kind of already know what you'll do. There might be a few that I'll have to go back in there and look at your answer in case it was entered just slightly different than how I made it so it could grade. Um, but if you have any questions, please let me know.